Are you so excited for GoFest 2023 this year in New York City? Well, stop right there. Before you book anything, I'm Mrs. Mime 100. I'm a Pokemon Go content creator here in New York City, and I'm going to tell you all the ins and outs you need to know about New York City before you ever show up for GoFest, August 18th to August 20th. Let's go. This is one of my most requested videos. Where should I stay while in New York, and how do I get to the park? Well, let's dive into it. So as you can see here, this is a map of New York City. It's really big. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go over the different boroughs for you. So first off, you have Staten Island all the way down here by its low level self and practically is New Jersey. You have Brooklyn, which is all the way down here to its east. You have JFK, which is technically in Queens. So uh, basically Queens is like this little uh, elbow shaped macaroni, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Queens right here. You got LaGuardia Airport, which is right over here. You got Manhattan, the big old, when you think of the Big Apple, this is what you think of Manhattan. Right down here, big old Central Park in the middle, which you can see even from this giant view. And then you have the Bronx, right all the way up here. It's Dremongous also. The thing we'll focus on, though, is Randall's Island Park. This is the location for GoFest 2023 in New York City. Uh, now, you'll see that it is on Randall's Island, which is actually divided up into two parks. So you have Ward's Island Park down at the bottom, and then you have Randall's Island Park at the top, which is where the GoFest activities will take place. What I will say is there are a couple ways to get to the park, but there is no direct public subway to get there. So I'm going to go over the ways that you can get there. One, there is a bus that will take you there. Uh, the bus goes across... This bridge right up top, which is called the RFK, Robert F. Kennedy Bridge, uh, it really only, the, that that bus really only services this upper bit of, like, East Harlem and, like, kind of upper Manhattan bit. So unless you're, like, staying right there, you're probably not going to need the bus. Or if you don't need accessibility at all, y you don't need the bus because you can actually walk. And I'm going to show you all the ways that you can actually walk to this park. I'm going to take our handy-dandy little street browser map. And uh, it's actually a little tricky to get the right perspective. So give me a second to, to zoom in here. So basically, this is like the, the driving turnoff to get there. But you can see there is actually a pedestrian path. And that's where you're going to need to walk if this is... You can see there's a sign right here. So you're going to need to walk this path, essentially, to get uh, up on there. Uh, I believe this is the path so that you can see there. there's a guy like biking right here. I believe that's where it goes because this whole loop-de-loop -loop situation will take you up onto the RFK bridge, which is right here, and you'll go across handy dandy make it to Randall's Island. Perfect. That's option number one. Another option, which I'll say is probably one of the more popular options, is the Ward Islands Bridge. This is an entirely pedestrian bridge that you'll take from like 103rd Street. You can kind of see it on the map actually. So like the entrance to the to the little ramp is like right here and it crosses on top of the highway and you'll be able to cross over and onto the Wards Island Bridge. So I can even zoom in. Boop. Yeah, this is a little pedestrian path. It is not very wide. So I anticipate that all the people that are going to be staying in the lower bits of Manhattan, which is going to be a lot of people, there's going to be some congestion here. So just keep that in mind. It is going to be pretty crowded. But I will also note that if you do take this bridge, you end up in the lower part of the Randall's Island island <laughs> meaning you're gonna have to walk up so essentially if you do have a south entrance ticket this is probably the best way to go for you or at least one of them the other one is if you are coming from queens or potentially brooklyn you can also take this which is very confusing because this is still the rfk bridge but this is the the queen side of it also known as astoria you might have heard of astoria before it's kind of a a lively, well-known neighborhood in Queens. I would also recommend this as a place to stay, but we're going to talk about that towards the end of the video. So RFK Bridge also has a walking path that you can get to Randall's Island from. And this, again, will take you uh, the south entrance. So let's see. Okay, nope. This is us on a boat. <laughs> uh, thanks, Google Maps. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, great. Yeah, there's a walking path up here. Uh, where is the walking path? I think that's it. I think the walking path is actually up here. 
I've never personally done any of these pads. <laughs> Here's the honest truth. As a New Yorker, you rarely go out to Reynolds Island. Rarely, rarely ever. If there's like a music festival and you're into that kind of thing, maybe you'll go out to Reynolds Island. But you almost never go out there. I happen to go buy it all the time because it's on my way home from the airports. So I know it's I know it exists. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, now this is not a bridge. This is actually some train tracks, so don't try to take that. Uh, but up at the northern part of the island are two entrances, actually, that you'll be able to take if you're staying in the Bronx, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but it is a little bit confusing. So again, it kind of looks like there's a highway path, but what you need to do is you're, you're looking for this entrance, essentially. Like, this is one of them. Welcome to Randall's Island Park. And it takes you, again, kind of to the side of the highway, so you're gonna have to walk across this bridge to the side of the highway to get to the park. Um, that is one entrance. I know the- I believe that the other side is also an entrance. Let me see. There's even a guy standing here. I wonder if this was, like, some kind of event where he's kind of like an usher trying to get people. But there should be an entrance on this side. Yeah, I mean, there's a ramp on this side, too. Yep. There's So there's two sides. You can walk on either side of the bridge. That's kind of neat. Um, that's another path <laughs> that you could potentially take. Now, this one is specifically called the Randall's Island Connector. So you'll see that you can, in fact, take it right here. Uh, this is a little bit of a more biker-friendly one. I think the other one is probably more like walking friendly, but this one is also a connector. So if you're also staying in the in the South Bronx and you find that this entrance is too crowded, you can try to take this entrance. Uh, now this is all barring that like they don't close off different entrances, but uh, these are all the ones. These are all the different ways that are currently available to actually like walk and get to the park. Um, there's no Google Maps here, unfortunately, so I can't go any further <laughs> than like this. But um, but yeah, you can see that this is another connection. So those are all one, two, three, four, five different walking ways or bus ways to get to Randall's Island. Now, there's another, there's actually another secret way to get to Randall's Island, and I'm actually going to investigate this a little more, but I'm pretty certain there's a ferry that goes directly to Randall's Island, and I believe it comes from all the way starting at the financial district. Which is pretty convenient if you're trying to stay in a hotel down here, because there are a lot of them down here, and there's some nice ones down here. So, I don't know. I've got to look into it a little bit more. I'm pretty sure there is one, and it probably makes a few stops along Manhattan here on the East River. It probably will take you, like, 40 minutes from lower Manhattan, but you're going to get a really beautiful scenic route. Very unique, and if this is, like, your first time in New York, that's that's a pretty cool view. I'm going to I'm gonna sell it to you. That's a pretty cool view. So we're going to investigate that a little more, but I'm pretty sure there is a ferry also that'll take you to Randall's Island. So those are all the different ways to get to the island. Now, where do you actually want to stay? Uh, these are my top recommendations. So what I just talked about, which is the financial district and potentially taking the ferry. Um, again, we'll look into that and investigate uh, whether that actually works and how expensive it is, how often it runs, things like that. Uh, and I'll get back to you in a future video. Another option is to stay in Midtown, Times Square. That is a totally popular option and completely fine. And the reason I say that is because all you need to do to get to uh, this entrance right here is to take the subway. 103rd Street runs the 6 train, the 4, four and 6 train, um, an express train and a local train. So the 4 train is an express train, the 6 train is a local train, so it makes more stops and it'll take a little bit longer. There's also a second avenue subway line that opened just a couple years ago and they've actually been building it for like a hundred years. But it goes to 96th Street on 2nd Avenue so you'll be like two avenues closer to where you need to be in the water, near near the water. Um, but there's only one subway line that goes there. Uh, it's the NQ. Is that technically one subway line? I mean it's the same as <laughs> the green line that I was just talking about. But uh, the NQ are the yellow lines um, and the last stop is 96th Street. So you get off at 96th Street and you walk up and you walk over and you'll be able to make it there. It's I'm going to warn you that this area of Manhattan is pretty hilly. So you're going to be doing a lot of I think downhills when you're walking from like 2nd Avenue all the way over to the water. 
and you might be doing a couple uphills when you start heading home for the day. Just as a heads up, uh, again, if you need like accessibility, you might want to think about taking the bus or maybe even the ferry. The ferry might be a good option as well. You can, of course, take an Uber or a car. I would not recommend it. Seeing how small this island is and the only like carport parking lot area is like here, it's going to be jam packed and the traffic is going to be really, really bad. And you're going to be really frustrated and be like, I can't even like I'm stuck on these bridges. I can't even get to the actual park, but I can see the park and like it's going to be real frustrating. Much in the way that like Vegas was a little bit like that, where there was literally no public transportation to get to the park. So everyone took an Uber uh, or a Lyft and it just like it was a nightmare of traffic and it was so expensive, too. So do not recommend it. Also, Ubers and Lyfts in New York City are really expensive. So I just don't recommend that at all <laughs> tbh for this portion of the of the trip at least you can do whatever you want at other times but like for this it's not gonna be worth it okay you can definitely take them to the like the areas near the bridges that might be a possibility because then they can just drop you off and leave but don't enter a location that is the the park itself because it's just going to cause traffic on traffic and that's not going to be fun Okay, so, like I said, uh, you can take the NQ to the 96th Street, or you can take the 456 train and take it up to, like, 103rd and then walk over a couple avenues and take this Wards Island Bridge, which is the pedestrian bridge. Now, another way to get there by subway is, or another place to stay, another area to stay, would be Astoria and Dittmar Steinway. That's kind of my recommendation, my secret recommendation. Mwah, chef's kiss is to stay in Queens. Honestly, taking this bridge is not going to be bad. It's probably going to be the least used entrance to get to the park that day. So like, feel free to like come from Queens and you can stay in the Queens area. It's a really neat neighborhood. There's a lot of good little restaurants and bars, um, lots of different like ethnic neighborhoods. Uh, so if you want to try really ethnic, authentic food, like Queens is a great area to be. And best of all, you're really, really close to LaGuardia Airport if you're flying out of LaGuardia, and uh, as close as you can possibly be to JFK Airport if you're flying into JFK. So, those are my recommendations for where to stay. Um, frankly, with Manhattan, as long as you stay on like the Upper East Side, like mid and like anywhere Midtown down, you're kind, you're gonna be like relatively okay because you're gonna be able to find at least a subway station where you'll be able to transfer to either this 456 line, uh, I'm sorry, the 46 line or this uh, NQ line right here that you need. <sighs> Staying in the Bronx, I would not necessarily advise it. <laughs> if you are a person who has never been to a big city, uh, you're not really comfortable in big cities or you're staying by yourself and you're not really too sure, I don't think I would recommend the South Bronx. I really wouldn't recommend the Bronx for anybody to stay in as a person who lives in the Bronx. Um, it is accessible. Uh, you do have some hotels that are kind of near here by Yankee Stadium, but it's hard to get anywhere in Manhattan. So if you're here to do some touristy things too, if you want to come see Central Park or the Metropolitan Museum, or uh, Bryant Park, which is the best place to play Pokemon Go normally. Yeah, the Bronx is very difficult to get to, <laughs> to and from. So I kind of wouldn't advise it, unless you already live here, or maybe you are some person who happens to get a flight into Westchester Airport, which is another airport option you can do. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily advise you stay in the Bronx. <laughs> But it's, it is there. I mean, if you, if you, uh, you know, want to stay with a group of friends or something and, uh, all go up together, maybe, maybe that's an option, but yeah, otherwise it's a little bit difficult to travel to. Anywho, it's a, it's a good little park and I'm, uh, I'm actually kind of curious cause I've never like set foot on it. <laughs> so I guess we'll see how that goes. I should mention that I would advise, and of course, do whatever you're going to want to do, but I would advise to look into hotels rather than Airbnbs in New York City. Some of the Airbnb situations in New York City are like, mm, not great. I perused a little bit last night. Uh, I even tried to look at like individual options as well as like group options. And um, 
I don't know. It There's not a lot of great options there, if I'm totally honest. And frankly, like, some of the reviews are not great. Like, you... This is my advice for all Airbnbs, is, like, you really want to look for something that's, like, a 4.8 rating or higher with, like, multiple reviews to make sure that they're all legit, right? And I just wasn't finding a lot of those in any of these areas that would be, like, viable options. And like I said before, there are a lot of hotels in New York. So, like, the financial district, um, even Chelsea is kind of okay. Um, Midtown, definitely, Times Square has so many. Uh, this, like, Midtown East area definitely has a lot. Um, so you're gonna be able to find hotels, for sure. And... Yeah, I think it's just, it, it's a safer bet to stay with a hotel rather than who knows what with an Airbnb. Again, do whatever you want, um, but that's sort of my advice for when you come stay in New York. I know they're, they might be tempting, Airbnbs might be tempting because the prices seem lower than hotels, but truthfully, you never know, and those Airbnbs might cancel on you last minute or whatever, and then you're going to be stuck with much higher hotel prices because you're booking so much closer to the event. So... Biggest advice right now is to start booking all your things before the prices go up, uh, especially flights. Flights right now seem to be a very good deal to come into New York, uh, from what I've seen. If you're coming from, like, California, great deals. Awesome. You can definitely take the train, too. If you're taking the train, you're going to plop yourself in, like, either Grand Central Station or, uh, it's not Port Authority, it's Penn Station. Uh, one of those two uh, train stations over there, and again, lots of... Lots of things to do around here, lots of hotels around here, so you'll be totally fine. And, of course, this 456 line, is, it's technically the 456 line, but 4 and 6 is what you need. Um, train line is what you'll need to, like, get close to the park as well. So, those are options. And, of course, the yellow line, uh, the NQ, go up there as well, and that's uh, another line that you might need. All very accessible <laughs> if you're coming by train. So... Those are my uh, hot tips. I hope that was helpful. If you found it helpful, hit the thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Um, tell me what you think. Tell me what other questions you have about coming to New York for GoFest 2023 in August 2023, 18th, 19th, and 20th. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. We're going to be planning a huge meetup. So keep your eyes on my social media, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.